So what is an archiving journal and how is it different from a common placing journal? I want to share with you guys how I use the Hobonishi Cousin in the A5 size as a archiving journal. For me, a common placing journal, well, the traditional sense is that you are basically keeping a notebook or a journal with other people's thoughts and quotes or opinions in that journal and it's more of like a reference sheet you know like it's kind of like the most basic of a common placing journal in today's world is like if you're a college student taking notes that's pre pretty much common placing because you are referencing like things you see in textbooks or something that your professor said something like that common placing is an actual term has an actual definition i'm obviously not giving like the actual straightforward definition, but just more of like a quick FYI, this is what it is. Archiving journals are, is more of like a made up term from the German journaling community. All it really is, is like a brain dump, info dump um, journal. For me, this is where I house, house all of like my thoughts on things that I love, things that I grew up with, happy memories. Um, I do have an actual journal. Here is like my normal journal. If you guys have seen any of my other journaling videos, you've seen this notebook. It's just a Moleskine um, expanded notebook. This one is definitely more of my journal of events or thoughts or ideas. And it's not dated obviously, so I can be creative with it and journal in it whenever I feel like and this journal is like more of like a personal diary where I can like write out my thoughts good or bad but the idea with this Hobonichi cousin is that it's really archiving um things that I love and most of the things I love are like nostalgic you know like things from my childhood um so instead of making a reference notebook or a referencing journal like a common placing journal would be this is more just like i want to look back at this and have happy thoughts about some of the things that i love most now i want to preface to say that this notebook has not been like worn in yet i actually just got this like a month ago those of you guys who struggle with finding like a journaling system that works for you i'm hoping that something like this especially if you want to use the Hobonichi Cousin, um, but are intimidated by the daily pages. I hope that this video can help you guys utilize this journal in, um, in a fun way. The other thing I want to preface is that I am not a daily journal person. <laughs> so I love the idea of Hobonichi's, uh, Hobonichi Cousins. I love the Tomoe River paper. I have the weeks. Um, the Hobonichi Week Planner. I've been using that for like three years, four years now. Um, I love the paper because it's so thin and it just has this nice like crispy, wispy sound to it, but the pens don't like bleed through and you can use markers and stuff and it will still not like tear the sheets. And I think that's why this notebook is so hyped because the Tomoe River paper is just like, there's something very like aesthetically and audio Audioly, that is not a word. There's something very aesthetic about the paper and it sounds really nice too. Anyway, so I just wanna preface those two things. Um, the biggest inspiration of creating this archiving journal for me was that I felt like my life is too boring to journal like personal things every single day. There's just nothing that interesting going on. <laughs> where I would need to write every single day. And the reason I'm saying that is not just like, um, be like self-deprecating or anything like that. It's just to be honest. I think a lot of us feel pressure when we want, like see things on social media, even on YouTube. I see people use this like notebook and they have so much going on. Like they have kids or like, you know, like especially if you are a parent and you have kids, I feel like you have a lot more things going on than those of us who don't. When you don't have kids, there's not as much going on, I feel like, um, unless you have like a crazy robust social life, which spoilers, I don't. So like, I feel like um, I would, was like having an existential crisis because I was like, what would I write in these every day? Like my life is so boring. And that's kind of what sparked this idea of like archiving. So there are some pages that I don't use and I don't know if I will ever use them. I'm sure I'll 
figure out a way to use it. But this, for example, I think is like a tracker of some kind. Um, I don't really know how I would utilize this. So it's just like a yearly overview tracker. All 12 months are on these four pages. A lot of people use it as like habit trackers or whatnot. I may use it as like a reading or writing tracker, but it just seems kind of pointless, honestly, if I'm being real. But um, uh, maybe I will use it to track the type of categories that I'm archiving. I don't know, we'll figure it out. So anyway, I skipped those pages. We're gonna talk about the monthly spread and this is gonna be a deep dive of the monthly spread. So again, uh, the whole point of this video, of me making this video, is for those of you guys who struggle with journaling, who feel like, I don't know, like you feel pressured, like you don't know what to journal about, like what to write about, this page is for you. This is the place where I feel like has really given me ideas to journal. So you want to treat the monthly spread as like what you're going to write about. It's basically a content calendar more or less. You don't really have to worry about the dates. For me, this this section, all it is is a, um, is a table of contents. If you want it to be seasonal, you can be. This is January, so it's technically still winter. If you wanted to write out like winter things, things that you love about winter uh, or winter related things, you could. I didn't really do that here. I just wrote random things that spark my interest to kind of get the juices flowing but basically you want to sit on the monthly spread for a little bit because this is where all of your ideas to write in the daily pages will come out let's say if you want to be seasonal you could think about all of the winter episodes of your you know your favorite holiday winter episodes of shows you grew up with you know um like charlie brown's christmas story or christmas movies books that are like wintry themed for me like i said i wanted to be free i wanted to be free from the confines of what other people say that you should do or you should write and no it has nothing to do with what other people want this is your place your happy place, your place to look back on and feel that spark of joy again and again. This is just anything and everything I was thinking of at the time. Here, I read The Only Ones Left, which was a Riley Sager book, uh, a thriller book, uh, on the 4th of January, right? So the idea is that if I go to the daily pages of the 4th of January, which I did not, by the way, spoilers, I did not write about Riley Sager's book on this page. But the idea, the idea is that if you go to this page, it would be the Riley Sager review. Um, the reason I didn't do that though is because this January spread was like extremely experimental and I wasn't sure if I was gonna follow it. So it's neither here or there, but just letting you know, that is the basic idea that you write about what you wanna write about. And then on that daily page, you'd write about it. Um, here, I went a little bit off because <laughs> I ended up trying to write in these pages before planning this out. So I wasn't all there yet. You may see that some of these are highlighted. Uh, so I use like this December page because I don't care about that. If you feel like you need some type of structure, like of organization of what you're gonna write about, you could make categories. So again, this is all experimental. I don't follow it to a T. But for the most part, I want to write about music and moods. Basically, a lot of songs really affect me deeply, um, whether they're songs I listen to like through traumatic events, breakups, whatever. Um, some songs just really hit me and I want to kind of think about those songs. They either hit me in a good way or a bad way, but the music that I listen to, obviously I love, so I want to be able to talk about um, certain songs. Another category is books. Books is an easy one if you're a reader because you can definitely like write about books you want to read, have a TBR section, um, books that you've read that you really do love um, and that you want to go back and like write about like a whole page about, you can. So this green section I think is just hobbies in general. Um, I wanted to write about some of the bags because you know I'm <laughs> If you guys uh, know that I do a lot of bag reviews on my channel, um, I love bags. It's just a hobby of mine. So I wanted to make this into more of a hobby category, but sure, writings and art. Throwback 
to the 90s and the Y2K content is probably the main driving force of this pl uh, planner or journal for me. One of the biggest shows of my childhood was Are You Afraid of the Dark? And this show called So Weird, it was like a Disney Channel original show. And I can, I, <laughs> it excites me to my core to talk about some of those episodes that affected me as a child, TV and movies. So um, just like, it doesn't have to be like 90s or Y2K, but just like any TV shows or movies that I like. Uh, Lo-Fi Ghost is actually the name of my blog. I do have a photography blog where sometimes I also talk about my anxiety. So I have a section called Anxiety Diaries, which is really just like a photo that I like and a little blurb about what is giving me anxiety. <laughs> I don't know. Cafe, um, very vague, but basically I wanted a um, category for like foods that I've liked or like restaurants that we really like, we, my partner and I, or myself, uh, restaurants that I like or cafes. I love coffee. Speaking of, I need some coffee right now. Coffee places I've re that, that I've loved. Um, so there will be a little, or maybe even recipes that I, that I think are interesting. So going back to the monthly spreads, again, this is just where you want to dive in and really plan out your content. And I feel like you shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself. Like this isn't like planning your day to day or like planning your life events. This is really just thinking about things that you really loved, whether it's current or from back in the day. Kids who grew up in the 90s, we had some like spooky adjacent TV shows. Like we, a lot of uh, people that grew up in the 90s that I know like spooky stuff, like um, scary movies and stuff like that. And I really think it's just because um, a lot of the kids shows that we grew up with were like spooky adjacent. Like for literally all of like my favorite shows were all like spooky adjacent. So stuff like Are You For The Dark, X-Files, So Weird. Um, Scooby-Doo, <laughs> hello, like Scooby-Doo. Uh, what kid didn't grow up on Scooby-Doo? And it's not like Scooby-Doo scary, but it's not, you know, it's like, a, it's like horror adjacent, you know? Um, Animorphs to some extent is like kind of spooky. Courage the Cowardly Dog, I mean, come on. There's just so much back in the day for us where it was like kind of horror adjacent. And I think that's why 90s kids love Halloween. I swear like every, Every person I meet that was born in my era, I feel like loves Halloween. Like just, I mean, everybody loves, a lot of people love, love Halloween, but I feel like especially my era is like, we just go gaga over Halloween. And I'm like, it kind of makes sense. We grew up in like a very Halloween era. I think the idea with this monthly page is to give you an idea. It's to give you a starting point of what to write. Okay. so. Then there are the weekly spreads. The weekly spreads look like this. This is definitely more for like planner. This is more like a planner content type of thing instead of a journaling content. Um, I was struggling to figure out how to use this space initially, but I think I, I think I kind of have an idea, but uh, this is definitely like last for me. Um, to worry about. So I go from the monthly spread to planning out the content and then I go straight into the daily pages because to me that makes more sense. And then the weekly spreads here, the way that I'm going to use it is that similar to the monthly spread, it is kind of like a table of contents, but this is more of like generic info. So in a sense, I am using this space as like a common placing space, if that makes sense, because none of these are like my words. These are from Wikipedia or some other like online source to where I get the information. There is a specific episode that I want to write about on the 24th. Here is just like information about that episode. And then I found the information, which was season three, episode 16, all in the mall. Um, it aired November 9th, 1991. Um, I feel like this works really well. Um, and you can also implement this into your system. I feel like talking about albums is a really nice way to fill the sheet because you can have all the track lists on here. I think the key is to try not to be too fussed over it because this section is like not super important to me anyway. 
I have highlighted here a 90s throwback, which is on a Monday because again, I was experimenting and didn't really go by the monthly chart. <laughs> like to a T. Uh, this is about a movie called Wish Upon a Star. And um, this is just like a fact sheet about the movie. This is like a synopsis. So January 22nd is where we should be. Here's kind of the idea. So like I said, if you use that, the monthly and, or the weekly section as like a table of contents, then you can go to that specified date and utilize the date system in that way like a table of contents and here i have a spread for wish upon a star i freaking love this movie i'm definitely like a girly girl of the 90s so i love like movies like clueless um spice world wish upon a star all of those um this movie was iconic iconic to me um i freaking loved katherine heigl she's just like such a bad b danielle harris too although like she's not as famous but she was amazing in this movie and just i just love everything about this movie it's so 90s so like just girly pop iconic and it lives in my head rent free like literally alexia's outfit lives in my head her outfits live in my head rent free this is what i mean by it's different from commonplacing because this is really all of my thoughts about this movie why it affects me why i love it and then the weekly section has all of the stats and info that's kind of the system that's been working really well for me it's very easy to fill this up and i hope that it kind of encourages you and gives you an idea that like or and feel excited like i am to really start to archiving because um it's like endless possibilities when you think of it as like an archive memory journal like it endless possibilities right like you will definitely not run out of content to write about i'm already thinking about like the next year's book because i feel like i am gonna run out of space um so that's kind of the idea again this is like very very new of a system for me this is my february yeah this is the february spread um I, I love the spread so much but yeah this is kind of like an example so i have like so weird here like um this is the first episode first season of so weird and i just have these little blurbs like printed out i think it definitely will help to have like a printer or like access to a printer to like print out some of this stuff i think one of the biggest challenges for me is writing so much info like i am not very good writing for long periods of time like i think i have arthritis i don't know so some sometimes i feel like writing is a challenge but uh, a great way to alleviate that is just to print it out um and again there's no rules like you can print things out you don't have to write everything out um or else like you know you're not going to get burned to the stake if you print something out instead of writing it with your hands. These are all printouts, like nothing is handwritten, but that doesn't mean like every single thing is, you can mix and match, you know? Like there's, again, there's no rules. There's no real rules. I think you just have to give yourself some leniency and know what you want to journal about and that's it. Um, here is a good example of some things that I printed out and then some things that I wrote about. <laughs> so there's no real rules here. It's just like whatever sparks, you know, sparks joy for you. Um, I do think visuals, at least for me, visuals is really important because I'm a visually driven person. So I definitely need like print outs, but I am a huge, huge advocate of that. You don't need to go buy stickers. Uh, if anything, you should invest in a printer if you don't have one. Even like a cheap printer will do. Um, nowadays, printers are so cheap. And as long as they print stuff, <laughs> it's fine. Um, if you want to go even the cheaper route, like maybe printing stuff is expensive, you could do black and white prints. Um, I personally love black and white prints, but that's just because I love the aesthetic of black, black and white. If you have like a mood board, like you create a mood board and you can do that on Pinterest or you can do it on like some kind of app. I do it on Photoshop because I'm a graphic designer, but if you have Photoshop, you can do that too. Um, and just have like a mood board and print out like a bunch of stuff that you see online. And then that way you're like saving paper as well. Like you can have a bunch of stuff on one sheet. Um, so that is pretty much the idea 
with the decorating aspect of it. Like I said, if you are not a visually driven person, you're more of like a wordy person. I think it also could help to like uh, print out like text if writing is just like too much sometimes. And also you can like mix it up. Like here I'm using like big, bigger markers to write out quotes from this song. I had some quotes printed out. This is from Nope. Uh, I freaking love Nope. It's like one of my favorite movies. Um, actually I had a spread, a Nope spread somewhere. I freaking love this movie so much, <laughs> so much. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all of like Jordan Peele's movies are like just the bomb, amazing. There's just no rules to this archiving system. It is really my memory dump of things I love. Every time I open it to this spread, or to any of the spreads, like it just brings so much happiness already. And I love going back to it. I love looking at the imagery. So I'm just happy to have a system that works for me because for the longest time, I mean, like for years, I have tried to make these dated planners work for me. Like I'm like, you know what? If I buy a dated planner because they have dates on it, I'm going to use it. Uh, I tried to do that with the Stalogy, my B6 Stalogy. I bought two of them at some point like last year they're all blank i think i use like three pages obviously i'll try and repurpose them as just like scribble notebooks or something like that but if you know that like dated systems don't work for you because you're not going to be able to plan in it every single day or write it in every single day then maybe think rethink of how to use that journal and use it as like an archiving system. I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. Um, I hope that it feels like achievable and exciting um, because I'm super excited to go deeper into this. I'll show you guys one last thing. I think what also helps is just like having a random pile of photos to go. So I already pre-cut and printed out all these things. These are just like random, you know, things that I'm going to be talking about. Pre-printing out, pre like having these stickers ready, I feel like um, will help kind of like also jumpstart <laughs> the process of writing because for me, writing is like the hard part. Having visual stickers is the fun part. Oh yeah, the Hex Girls, if you know, you know. This is like the perfect sticker. I might just cut this out, like, and put this somewhere else. Cause this is like, I love this. This is from Scooby-Doo. Um, you know how they always have like a fake, fake out, like a fake ghost who's not the real ghost? Well, none of them are ever real. Uh, this is another, The this is from Pinterest. So I feel like this is way more interesting than buying like pre-made stickers. Um, I think it's more, this is like where the creative part comes in. Um, and honestly, I just like pull them all from Pinterest and then I like lay them out on like, I just print out like a whole sheet with a bunch of um, images and then cut them out. Oh my God, this is so big. I just wanted to show you guys some visuals just to like show you guys like all the fun ideas I have in mind. Anyway, so that is pretty much it for the video. Um, I hope this was helpful again, and I hope that this is interesting. And I'd love to know if you guys, or if any of you guys watching are utilizing your Hobonichi cousin in a similar way, or any of your Hobonichi books that are dated. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to know you guys' thoughts on it and everything. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video where we're going to journal together. Um, yeah, so hope you guys have a good rest of the week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.